Hello. Hi. How are you? I'm great. How are you, my darling? It's so good to see you. And you too. I just always, I wanted to be here on time. <laughs> you are here on time. You did not, do not, are not late at all. <clears throat> Oh, so how's life treating you, Jill Celeste? Everything is going really great. Thank you. Good, good. God, I miss you guys so much. Oh, and I know you've got a meeting starting very soon. I'm not in Boldheart anymore. Are you not? No. Mm -hmm. Oh, well. Yeah. So you're not, are, you, are you coaching? Are you I'm doing... coaching till the end of March, and then I'll right. be stopping. Okay. Yeah. Wow. How time. does that feel? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just going to be working on my own business for a change. Yeah, good for you. Yeah, thank wow. you. The thing I is, you've got, got so much from Boldheart, haven't oh, you? Oh, I did. Oh, I did. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Susan was in Boldheart too, but it was called Cabs back then. Ah, <laughs> way, way back, back in Cabs day. days. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Susan. <laughs> Hi. Hi, Good morning, everybody. How are you? Good. Good morning. How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. Good. You got a different background today. Oh yeah, Rusty's working upstairs today. <laughs> Very nice. We do. Yeah. Let's. <clears throat> I had to put my nice. screen up. What? I had to put my screen up because my husband's home, so he can uh, see me. Oh, <laughs> I see. <laughs> I used to block the guinea pigs. Now I block my husband. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Richard. <laughs> it's get allocated to another room, so it's just. He just has he has a his he works from home on Fridays. He has an office uh, behind me, but has a door. I chose the room that was no door on purpose. So, uh, so this is my door. That's your door. Yeah, so space. This is my space. This is my space. I have the biggest. I'm gonna space finish my dog, and I'll be right with you guys. Okay, no problem. My dog is sleeping by my side as usual. Where are yours, Susan? I'm surprised I don't see Callie or Fiona. Oh, there they are. And Cammy's over on the other side of the room on the bed. And Oh. I stole my pajamas because my husband is still in the bed, and so I didn't want to wake him up. <laughs> Go in here. You don't look like you're in your pajamas at all. Well, I, I had something to throw on. I'm <laughs> totally in my pajamas. So <laughs> <Dog mom. laughs> of course, it's early morning for you guys. Well, yeah. eight, eight o'clock? 8 a.m. for yeah, us, eight, most of us yeah. in Eastern time zone. What time is it with you? Where are you at, Heather? It's just gone one, so oh, my day's okay. kind of half over, you know. Yeah, yeah. I love it turquoise in your house oh thank you i'm a real well you know i'm a real color person so yes. yeah there's lots of turquoise okay. and if you were in the kitchen it would be lime green and orange and um yeah what else dark green lime green orange and something else can't remember now yeah i've got an orange kitchen too ah great taste <laughs> hi Debbie. good morning good morning who everyone has, good morning who has an orange kitchen what? Susan and Heather have orange kitchens. Yeah. <laughs> Mine's going to be orange soon, too. Well, orange. Oh. Wow. Must be the well, Debbie's, Debbie's seen my colorful kitchen, so she has. Yeah, it's more than orange. It's, yeah. it's multi-color. It's very fun. Heather's house is gorgeous. <laughs> Love that. Good morning, Mary Beth, as she's getting signed in. Good morning. Hannah Hi, is uh, Hannah's taking her dog to the vet. The, vet, uh, the dog is fine. It's just a checkup. Go. She won't be here. And Judy Kane has, oh, yeah, look at that glare. Um, whoa, there we go. We're not uh, used to having sunshine in the mid like Exactly. Okay, that's fun. Uh, Judy Kane has a meeting, and we will wait for Connie Jo because I have a feeling she'll be here. But in the meantime, Debbie got us started. If you could put your, um, if everybody can put your first and last name into the chat box with your email address. Uh, including Heather, so uh, we, that's how we take attendance here in virtual networkers. And um, just so you know, Heather is recorded, and oh, I will send you a re uh, replay link along with a PDF of the chat box. So in case you want to follow up with somebody or want someone's email address or whatever, you will have access to that as well. Excellent, thank you, Joe. You're welcome. <clears throat> I know the speakers like it because sometimes they share the uh, presentation with their communities and you're welcome to do that. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, uh, that, would be, that would be great. Yeah, for that reason. Uh, Faye, have you heard from Connie Jo? I have not. Okay. Well, she must be on her way. What a weird one. she is. We'll wait for her. We'll give her another minute and then we'll get started. I know she's not a morning person, so. 
We went to Hannah's book party in uh, <coughs> Norway yesterday. Ooh, that was that totally fun. It was, it, well, it was interesting because we didn't see anybody. We could hear them. We were watching Hannah. And so I don't know if they could see us or not, but yeah. So I did a little thing and then Connie did a little thing and it was probably all 10 minutes, but it was just, it was clear. Hannah was just flying high. It was wonderful. Oh, how good. Really wonderful. I'm so glad. Well, Hannah, we, we miss you. Hannah's not going to be here today because she's taking Brandy to the vet for a checkup. Nothing, nothing wrong with Brandy. Um, but uh, we'll go ahead and get started. And if Connie Jo pops in, we'll just welcome her in. But I want to be conscientious of your time. And I have a haircut after this. Vacation waits for no woman. Well, I tell you what. Uh, so welcome and good morning. Happy Friday to everyone. I hope you're staying warm. If you are cold, uh, it's even a little bit too <laughs> Where's Margaret? Where's my Floridians? I tell you what. Um, it's a little chilly in Florida today. We actually have 48 degrees. That's cold for us. Oh, yes. I don't know what that is in Celsius, sorry. Um, we'll get started with our elevator speeches, um, and I will put us into the Brady Bunch mode. There's Connie Jo signing in. So I'm going to start us at the bottom, so that will be Mary Beth. Kick us uh, off, Mary Beth. Okay, all right. Oh, my God. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> what are you drinking? Some water. Oh, water. Yummy, yum, yums. <laughs> so it's Mary Beth Decker with sacredgrove.com. Um, this week I was communicating intuitively with little Wasabe, the little gray cat who's heartbroken over um, her mom and dad breaking up. And they weren't married, but you know what? When you all live together, it's a family. And so, um, uh, I felt like a, a, a marriage counselor. They're not getting back together, but uh, the um, guy is going to come over and say his farewells because they broke up over the phone and Wasabi never got to say goodbye. So, <laughs> which is going to help everybody move on. So, uh, who do you know that needs an animal communicator to find out what's going on with your animal and if there's some way you can help them? Let me, let me just do that for today. <laughs> so, because I call myself uh, Sacred Grove, where people and pets heal and connect. So, so that's the kind of things I, I get into, strangely enough. Thank you. you I, I can't wait for your book to come out when you just share all these stories, which oh. is more about humans and animals in some cases. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Thank you. I love it. Good morning, Debbie. You're next. Good morning. I hope you guys can hear me. I'm just uh, breaking through this cold. Sounds great. <laughs> so I am Debbie Keevan of DebraKeevan.com, and I work with change makers to help them integrate the things in their past that maybe they're feeling a little ashamed about and really step in, un unpack it all, release it, and then map out a way to their happier future all by using their stories. Yeah. And I'm in Baltimore. 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 <laughs> We're good to see you. Glad you feel a little better. Thank you. Yeah. So we must have the, I have in my row, it's the Virginia, Maryland contingency. Susan Rose, you're next. Hello, I'm in Reston, Virginia. So it goes uh, Debbie, Mary Beth, Susan <laughs> in the lineup down the East Coast. Um, I am my company, SusanRose.net. I am a copywriter and coaching mentor, and I help small businesses, particularly coaches, figure out how to write or learn to write like the professional writers so they're getting the same return on the investment. So all the content they're already creating is actually going to result in more clients and more business for them. We are glad you're here. Thank you for being here. Susan's from, uh, so Heather, we have another virtual networking group. It meets on Mondays, and ah. Susan is a member of that group, and she comes and visits us too, which we love having her. Because I like <laughs> this group an awful lot, so I crash it. <laughs> <laughs> you're welcome to crash. You're welcome to crash. Faye, you're next. Good morning. I'm Faye Tarshish, and I own Kathy's Cape. And Kathy's Cape is, and this is Golda. She's here visiting. Oh, hi, sweetie. <laughs> um, sorry about that. She keeps jumping up here. I am Kathy's Cape, and Kathy's Cape is a company uh, that I created. Uh, it's a, a fleece cape that I created to keep people warm while going through infusion therapy. Um, 
pockets in and out. It wraps in the back. The pockets are for their belongings, so they don't have to carry a purse, put anything on the floor. And it's kind of a hug while they're going through a difficult situation. Thank you, Faye. And I'm in Alpharetta, Georgia. Alpharetta. I'm next. Uh, I'm Jill Celeste. I think everybody knows me, but just in case, Jill Celeste. I live near Tampa, Florida, founder of the Celestial Circle. And uh, I am also the president of this particular chapter um, of Virtual Networkers. And uh, I'm excited to see everybody here today. Um, my, I'm not gonna, you all know what I do, but I just wanna remind you that we are having an open house on February 15th. I will get details out to you all very soon about that, but if you could just mark your calendars for February 15th uh, for open house, bring friends, and uh, we'll grow our chapter that way. So that's my spiel. Heather, I know you are a speaker, but you still get to do an elevator speech. <laughs> okay. Uh, my name's Heather Waring. My business is Women Walking, Women Talking. I'm based in London in the United Kingdom. Um, and I actually work with women all over the world. And in fact, there are a no growing number of North American women who want to come and try out the Camino, which is my kind of signature walk that I take. And I take women on transformational walking experiences, be that a few hours or a day or a week. And we tap into the wisdom of the path and the wisdom and the history of those who walked before. And then we apply that to ourselves. We bring out our wonderful wisdom and our wonderful stories stories as well. And that space and time allows women to think and to have space to focus just on themselves, to reconnect and find the woman they always wanted to be and wear and got lost. <laughs> yes. We're so glad you're here, Heather. Thank you. I'm yeah. delighted to be here. Yay. All right. Uh, Connie Jo Miller, good morning. Your turn. Okay. Got to wake up here. <laughs> Um, my kids both recently graduated from college. Almost every week, there's a letter in the mail offering them a credit card with 0% interest for one year and then close to 25% interest after that. We're bombarded constantly on TV and social media with thousands of products that are must-haves. It's buy, buy, buy. It's no surprise that one of the top reasons for divorce is financial stress. I'm Connie Jo Miller of Enigma Bookkeeping and Money Solutions. I offer bookkeeping services to uh, coaches and solopreneurs, and I also um, serve as a money guide. I walk you through a 90-day program that will teach you the skills you need to gain um, to control your finances. It's not too late to turn your situation around, no matter how powerless or hopeless you feel. Woo! Very nice. Nice job, Connie Jo. <clears throat> I did this yesterday in my um, networking group and it was very well received. Oh, that's awesome. Congratulations. Yeah. Yay! Good, good, good. All right, Margaret, last but certainly not least. <laughs> good morning. I am Margaret Martin. I live in the wonderful little town of Dunedin, Florida in the Tampa Bay area. It's a great well-kept secret and we like it that way <laughs> but come visit uh, we have we have a great great little city in the meantime um, I'm blessed to be able to work with people and help them make positive change in their lives so they can live a an abundant and fulfilling life I do that as a coach in various aspects of coaching such as life coaching life design helping people uncover what their passion is and move forward as well as as a career transition coach helping people when they get laid off or as they're looking for a new position get their resumes LinkedIn profiles updated and I do presentations on my book the chatter that matters your words are your power and I love it all <laughs> Uh, we love you, Margaret. <laughs> we love all your projects and your energy. It's awesome. And I have to say, I have to give a shout out to all the ladies with short hair <laughs> today. Look at you, power women. <laughs> Susan and I are kind of like. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I am getting my hair cut, but not. But not. I'm in the middle. <laughs> I got my hair cut, so it's an inch shorter than it was last week. <laughs> oh well, there you go. There you go. <laughs> I just kind of see, I see you all at once and I'm like, look at that short hair. I love it. <laughs> so we're going to move into our presentation. Um, before, I before I move that, just in case you have not done so, please put your name 
email in the chat box if you haven't done that yet. And um, Debbie, do you have the honors of introducing? Okay, awesome. Heather, do you have slides or are you just going to talk today? No, I'm just going to talk to you. Oh, that's awesome. We love that. That's so um, I can't wait for Debbie's introduction because I know Debbie and Heather so well. So I will now pass the baton on to Debbie for introduction of our speaker. Okay, so I, Heather gave me a lovely bio, so I'm just going to use what she gave me. Heather is a walk leader and Camino expert. She's an author, speaker, and coach who uses walking as a vehicle for transformation. Where possible, she walks on ancient paths like the Camino de Santiago and the Pilgrim's Way, tapping into the energy, the wisdom, and the stories of those who have gone before and using the learnings to tap into our own knowledge and wisdom and bring forth our own stories. On the Path is a great place to find peace and calm, time to be and escape from our day-to-day -day routines. It's where we can, we can be to rediscover ourselves and reconnect. Many of clients, Heather's clients are at a crossroads in life and not clear of the way forward. They are wondering if this is it and mourning the woman they seem to have lost in the busyness and stress of modern life. Heather works with them on and off the path in small groups and one-to-one -to, -one to find their way back to their true selves and the life they want to jump out of, out of bed every day and live. As someone who has, constantly, who has constantly pushed herself as a career woman, mom, wife, daughter, and friend, Heather got lost along the way. And in 2013 and 2014, she burnt out and had a diagnosis of adrenal fatigue. She described that as the greatest gift she could ever have been given and is here to tell other women that you can indeed find your way back to an even greater and happier version of you. Heather is a passionate long distance <laughs> walker, having walked the Camino de Santiago from the center of France to Santiago in Western Spain. That's over a thousand miles, peeps. She has trekked the Inca Trail, walked some of the Great Wall of China, and is constantly exploring other walking routes. She has been a columnist for both, both Cosmopolitan Magazine and the Sunday Express, and is a regular contributor to Glamour Magazine. For two years, she wrote a syndicated column for a local newspaper and a monthly glossy magazine. She's been on a BBC TV and radio, has written many blog posts, as well has been interviewed for podcasts blogs, and radio, local radio shows. I introduce to you my sister from another mister, Heather Waring. <laughs> I didn't realize I'd given you such a long bio. Quite <laughs> embarrassing, really. <laughs> and there's ways to connect with her, too, which I'm sure you <laughs> will use. In the... Well, thank you, Debbie, and uh, thank you, Jill, for inviting me here, and thank you, ladies, for showing up today. And um, just let me get started in telling you about the power of the path. So <clears throat> I trace my love of walking way, way back to a walk that sticks in my mind when I was uh, about 14 years of age. I was brought up in Northern Ireland and we have a very iconic place in Northern Ireland called the Giant's Causeway, um, which has very unusual six-sided columns and they're made of basalt and it's all part of volcanic movement and lots of people come and uh, visit it. But there are numerous paths that lead away from the causeway itself along the cliffs. And I remember at Easter time one year with my family walking along this very narrow path that seemed to hug the cliffs about halfway down. It wasn't dangerous. It wasn't, it wasn't so steep that you felt you were going to fall off the edge. But I just remember the scenery on that day. I remember the crashing of the waves, the blue sky, the amazing scenery, and also just the fact of being energized and just feeling part of something greater than me. Now, I put all that away and kind of forgot all about it. And it's only in the past couple of years that that, that walk has really come to the fore again. And never, of course, at that point in time did I ever realize what an important role walking would, would play in my life. And in fact, walking has actually been my savior on three very specific occasions. In 1999, I was uh, wo working for the British Heart Foundation in the United Kingdom. I was training to do a walk along the Great Wall of China. 
all that sounds very positive, but actually at the same time, I was also being bullied in the workplace. And I came to realize that my monthly training walks to meet up with my walking buddy in the Lake District, which was one of the UK's most beautiful kind of areas for walking, those those journeys, those weekends were my escape. They allowed me to get away from work, to get away from everything else that might potentially be stressing me. And what they also did was put life into perspective. When you have climbed up to the top of a hill or even a mountain and you're sitting at the top of that eating your sannies in the sunshine sandwiches for, for those in America who might not, you might not understand sannies, <clears throat> you're sitting there and you're looking out at hills and lakes and even bigger mountains and beautiful countryside. And suddenly you realize that actually a lot of the stuff that I was sweating about in life, a lot of the stuff that we all sweat about, is actually in the great scheme of things not that important. We do get carried away with, with the minutiae of life sometimes. And that's not to say that there are not things in our lives that are important and that we do need to worry about. But there's an awful lot that really is not that great. So that walking was really my savior. Fast forward eight years, and we had to abandon a holiday in Spain, a family holiday, because I had hurt my back. Now my husband is busy saying to me, Heather, you've just hurt your back. I'm thinking there's some message here. And I'd been doing a lot of talking to the universe about the fact that I wasn't looking after myself well enough and I wasn't doing enough exercise. And so my interpretation of this was that this was the universe saying to me, okay, Heather, you're still not doing enough exercise. So we've intervened. You now have a bad back. You've got to find a way to deal with this. So I started walking because ladies, I think you probably agree, if you're gonna do any form of exercise, it has to be a form that you can integrate into your life. If it's too difficult, you just, you might do it at the start, but soon it will go. So I started walking 30 minutes every morning and before long, I could feel the difference. And the interesting thing was that other people were coming up to me saying, you've been at a spa? what on earth have you been doing? You're glowing. You're looking trimmer. And I was, I was indeed trimmer. I was fitter. I was in a much better mood constantly. I was glowing and I was just feeling so good. And that ladies did not take very long. We're probably talking about maybe six weeks here. The third time was in 2014. As Debbie mentioned in my bio, I burnt out 2013, 2014. And it was the power of the path that actually helped me to recover. By going out walking, even when I wasn't feeling that energetic, just being in nature and that rhythm of the path tended to slow the stress down. It slowed my pace down. It allowed me to kind of be in the moment. It allowed me to connect. And that allowed me to start to see the light at the end of the tunnel. And then as I went on and I started to get fitter and I started to be able to do more, that walking played a big, big role there. And it still does today because today I try and walk as much as I can. I try and do my 10,000 steps a day plus, And that keeps my, my stress at bay and it just keeps me connected. It's, it's, it's a magical thing to do. Now, walking brings to us so many physical and mental benefits. And I have a list, it's a non-exhaustive list of 40, 41 health and mental health benefits. And I will attach that in some way so that you can all access that if you'd like to. Um, so I've mentioned some of them already, but I wanna pick up on a couple more. One is for mental health patients, for people having mental health issues, and stress is a mental health issue, but any of those, walking can really play a big, big part. There's been a lot of research done to show that. There's a, a Japanese technique, and I can't give you the Japanese name, but its translation is into forest bathing, which is a very slow process of immersing yourself in forest or woodland. That is my next course, because it's been used a 
lot with mental health patients and with elderly patients as well as a way of getting them out into nature. It also plays a really protective um, role in three of the biggest health issues and killers in the, in the Western world, which is diabetes, cancer, and heart disease. So really, it shouldn't go unnoticed. And finally, for all of us, because I think we're women of roughly a certain age, then in terms of life expectation, it really does help with that. It, it enables us to look better, feel better. And you know, I don't know about you, but if I'm going to live long, I want to live long with all my mental faculties and my physical faculties. And if something like integrating, um, walking into my day helps me do that, then I'm all for it. So that I think is one of the biggest benefits that it brings us. I want you to imagine an activity that you can do from your front door, that you can take on holidays with you. All you need is a comfortable pair of shoes that is so easy to integrate into your life. But it's also an activity that is your exercise. It can be your meditation time. It can be your me time, your creative time. And it gives back in so many ways. Walking expands is something to do with walking in fresh air and especially in nature and I, I find this more and more it it actually expands our creativity I when I'm out walking I have my my phone with me and I am often using that recording device and I have written blog posts I have come up with um, sort of text about a product I've even put a product together as I've walked because my world just expands, my creativity expands. And in the same way, it also helps with decision making. I do quite a lot of coaching on foot. And when I'm coaching with women, they somehow seem to make decisions much easier and much quicker. And the other thing that is really, really cool is that because when you walk, you don't have to maintain eye contact all the time. So if you're having to have a discussion or a conversation and especially if it's a difficult one it's a great way to have that conversation so walking with children walking with grandchildren needing to have a serious conversation it's brilliant it's a bit like you driving and having them in the back of the car um, it's also really good to have meetings on foot and I do some work with businesses now helping them to integrate the whole idea of running their businesses or running their meetings on foot. So it gives you all of those things. Now, in my time walking, and especially my time walking on the Camino, and as Debbie said, I've done the Camino from the center of France in sections, I want you to know, not in one fell swoop. Uh, lots of people do the 500 miles from the French-Spanish border in four to six weeks. I hate to think how long a thousand miles from the center of France would take. But in all those nine sections, and then the sections that I've gone back and walked with um, women, I have come up with a series of seven Camino principles. And I realize now that I live my life very much by these Camino principles. And I'd like to share them with you today. They are applicable to all aspects of life. So you can take them and apply them to business. You can apply them to your personal life. And I'm sure you can be creative and come up with other ways that they will be developed and used. What I'd just like to say to you is that um, at the moment, they're still in development. So what I'm sharing with you is very much a moving feast and, and definitely a project that's ongoing. So let's see how we get so far. So the first one is to treat everyone with respect and to treat everyone as an equal. One of the great things about being on the Camino and being on a long distance path is that everybody's in walking gear. So you don't know when you start a conversation with someone whether they are actually um, a CEO, a student, a priest, an entrepreneur. And so what happens is you approach that person as a person, 
you don't make any judgments about them because you you have nothing to make judgments on really and for any of us who might find that at times we are in fact intimidated by someone in a particular role or someone's status this leveling of the path because of everyone dressed in the same way it just it just takes all that away now I believe that people come into our lives for reasons and I believe that most people have got something to teach us even if it's an experience that presses buttons and makes us feel not particularly good and so as we treat people with respect as we treat people as equals we can realize what they bring to the party so to speak as well and we can learn from them and then take that learning and perhaps bring this into our own lives and so the other thing is when you treat people with respect they are much more likely to do the same service and give you the same courtesy the second principle is keep it simple and I know Debbie having been on the Camino with me is very aware of this you get up in the morning and really your task for the day is getting from point a where you are to point b where you're going to end up the biggest decision you're likely to have to make on that day's journey is, what am I gonna have for lunch today? Or perhaps, where am I going to have it? It really is that simple. And there's also a lovely rhythm to the path. You know, if you're, anytime you go and you're walking, just pay attention to your walking. It's a, it's a step by step process and especially too when you're on a long distance path you might be using the walking poles you have a regular kind of tap 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 and it's why i also find walking being a meditative type activity because you get into the flow of this rhythm and this rhythm carries you through and it's a wonderful simplicity now in life i think that we are actually taught to make things complex. There's something about, you know, if a program is more complex, if it's got more bells and whistles, if it's surely things can't be that simple, you know, isn't there something wrong if something is that simple? No, not necessarily. It actually can just be that straightforward. So perhaps when we find ourselves falling into the temptation to make things more complex, we can actually just backtrack a little bit and think, no, how can I make this simple? What a great pleasure it is when you come to something that is simple. When you come to a website that one click or two clicks at the most take you exactly to where you want to go. So in business and in life, how can you simplify these things? How can you take that principle and use it? The third principle <clears throat> is to be in tune with you. Only you know who you really are. Only you know how you really tick. So take that knowledge of you and bring that into the rest of your life. Now that may sound like a pretty crazy thing to say, but I have a firm belief in all the work that I have done with women, that we women tend to end up living our lives on somewhat superficial levels sometimes. And I don't mean that in an offensive way. I just mean that because of our whole DNA, or our hormonal makeup, our cultural upbringing, we are the women, we are the nurturers, the carers, the people who's there for every single other person. And we are the crumbs that get sort of swept off the table. So let's stop that now and let's realize that we're just as important as everyone else. And I know that is really hard to do. It's much easier to say than to actually put into practice, but maybe this will help. If you actually know who you are and you're living your life from that perspective and giving time to your needs, you are in a much better place to give to others and you're less resentful when you do because you've had your time, you've had your, um, your moment to have your needs met. And so it's also about how do you fit meeting your needs into your day on a regular basis. And again, for me, walking in nature helps me feel grounded. It helps me feel a sense of belonging. There is so much wonder in nature. And again, as well as these principles, I now 
have got into the flow of living my life very much in the flow of nature. So this time of the year in Northern Hemisphere, there's a lot of animals hibernating. You look at the trees, the trees that lose their leaves and there are no leaves. But you know that in a few months time, we're gonna see those buds, then we're gonna see those leaves unfurling, then we're gonna have these wonderful canopies of beautiful green leaves. Then we're gonna go into fall where we're gonna get all those fantastic colors. And then all those leaves are gonna disappear. And it's really like magic. But at this time of the year, there's nothing happening or there's the beginnings of things happening behind the scenes. Now, for me, this is my hibernation time. Doesn't mean I don't work. Somebody said to me one day, but Heather, not everybody can afford to take three months off. I don't take three months off. Not at this time of the year. I'm busy doing inner work. I'm busy being a lot less regimented. I am writing, I'm creating, I'm doing things that are kind of slower and calmer. And then when we come to the spring, that's when I get out leading my Caminos and leading my other walking. I still do my own walking and I train some of my Camino ladies, but it's just not as hard pushed and fast. So the other thing to bear in mind about the um, connection with you is the different environments that you work in and the different people you come across. You know, most of us live in multicultural societies now with people who have different religious beliefs, who come from different cultural upbringings, who don't even have English as their first language. How do we help them feel part of the environment that we are in? How do we tune into them as well so that we can all work and make that ability to work together simple like number two. So number four is ensure, sorry, ensure adequate planning time. Now, as you can imagine for me in a lot of the work that I do, planning is crucial. I need to plan my training. If I don't train enough, if I don't start my training at the right time, I run the risk of injury. If I don't plan the travel, and this is for me and all my clients, then I may not get as good a deal. I may not have as much choice. Things may not be as cost effective. And then what about when I'm out on a walk? What, what happens to what I need to take with me? I really have to think about what I need because weight is usually very crucial. And there's no point turning up and finding I've left my walking poles behind or something like that. Now, all those things are equally as important for my clients. And so I pass all that on to my clients. I do them a training um, uh, plan. I, I uh, tell them what they need to pack. I give them information about what flights to book so that they are well planned as well. So what about you and your planning? When do you do your planning? Are you a fly-by-night girl who does it at the last minute, at the beginning of January or at the very start of the month? Or are you a bit more like me who's learned that the best time for me to do my planning is in November? So I can kind of smugly segue into the festive season and I can tick a few boxes and finish the odds and ends up, but I can enjoy the Christmas New Year period and then I can start knowing exactly what I have to do. But planning's not only about the year, it's about the week, the day, the month. It's about knowing maybe at the end of the day, you take a few minutes to just check what you're doing the next day so that you know what's going to be in your day. You know what you have to deal with. You know what's important first. In terms of projects, it's about having your plan and know what's happening. So it really is a crucial element of the work that we do. Number five is managing expectations. Now, it's so important that all of us in the work that we do, whether we're service providers, whether we um, have products or whatever, that we exactly state what things are about so that people are coming to us know what, um, what to expect. Again, if I relate it to myself, taking a group of ladies away to walk, they want to know how they're going to get there. They want to know their dates. They want to know what to take. They want to know where to meet. They want to know what's expected of them. They want to know on a day-to-day -day basis what they're going to see, what the obstacles are going to be, what the, um, the path is going to be like. 
if I don't give them this, then they get rather confused. They can feel really alone and disconnected. And in fact, they can turn out to be a very unhappy client. None of us wants to have unhappy clients. And I firmly believe that actually managing expectations well is down to good communication. If we communicate, that's just so important. I always think of being on the tube, the underground train in London that I use oh, practically daily. If the train stops in the middle of a tunnel, people leave it for a couple of minutes and then if it still doesn't start, they look around and you begin to sense the anxiety and the, and the slight panic of maybe not getting to work on time and people looking at their watches. But if the driver says, I'm really sorry that we stopped, there's a train held up ahead in the platform, you know, I'll let you know as soon as we're on the move. People visibly relax. They even talk to each other, which is something that people do, don't, do not do on the tube in London. But it's diffused. So sometimes we need to repeat the expectations. We need to repeat the information to people so that they get the story a few times, so that they also, depending on how they learn, you know, why that, whether they're kinesthetic or audio or do audio or can't even speak anymore or visual they get the right information and then if we change things we need to go and make sure we communicate that and we need to be prepared to answer any questions that might come up as a result of changing those plans and if the change is crucial is is really dramatic then We've got to know what our fallback position is so that we can manage those expectations and keep our clients happy. And if for any reason something has to be abandoned, we want those clients to feel comfortable enough to feel that their expectations were dealt with, that they rebook with us or come back to us again. Number six is, and I just lost track of what number six is. Number six is be flexible. Now, again, in my world, injury, be that a sprained ankle, a cold muscle, or a blister, can actually impact a whole group and a whole trip. And in one of my first um, Camino experiences, I had a client who hurt her knee. We'd all walked across a particular piece of ground, but unfortunately, she slipped while walking across it and twisted her knee and was in really, really great pain. Now, luckily, she had a, a knee brace with her. So one of the, the group got her to put the knee brace on and slowly we managed to get her walking again albeit in pain and discomfort. But we were out on a, a very lonely path. There was no one really to call for help. So it was a case of managing to get her to base. Now you can send some people on to let the hotel know we're coming. The others can stay and support because it's really important when something like that happens that you don't feel alone. And for me as a leader, it's not only dealing with the person who's got injured, but it's also dealing with the rest of the group and their expectations and what's going to happen now. Now my lovely lady, um, we gave her some painkillers, we gave her some pain get pain gel to help told her to keep her leg up did various things and in the morning she was determined to walk which is laudable and which was great until keeping an eye on her I realized she actually was in great pain and this probably wasn't doing her any good and she was slow of course she was slow but of course that was slowing the group down so I had to make a very difficult decision, which was to put that client in a taxi and put her on to the next um, hotel. It wasn't what she wanted to do. It wasn't really what I wanted to do, but I had to think of the group as well and her, and that's what we did. And she was then able, not in her best way and not in the way she would have wanted to, to complete the rest of the walk. But what also happened was that second day when we'd had to put her in a taxi, because of the late night and the long walk the day before, I knew at a certain point that my ladies weren't going to be able to complete the whole of the second day, uh, distance-wise and time-wise. So again, I had to be flexible and I had to decide this is a point we're going to stop. We're just going to get some taxis and we're going to have some time to relax when we get to the hotel. So it's very important we have a plan. 
But it's also very important that we actually are realistic enough to know that life throws curved balls at us all the time and we have to have a flexible approach to that. And the more flexible the approach, the less likely that we are to be railroaded by something. Now, when something goes wrong, often all you have to do is maybe make a few tweaks, you can continue. But there are other times when it may mean you have to call a family meeting or you have to get together with your colleagues and you have to brainstorm possible solutions. And sometimes you may have to put plan A to bed, just forget about it. And then that's where plan B comes in because we should always have a plan B waiting in the wings. Now, my final principle is number seven, and that's celebrate. I am very big on celebration, both personally and in business. I feel that from a business perspective, often it's not something we do enough of. Now, when I say celebration, I do not mean that it has to be expansive and expensive. And I think sometimes when you mention the word celebration, people think champagne, parties, you know, expensive meals out. Those are all great. And by all means, you know, use those as a form of celebration. But a celebration when you achieve something can just be a stop and an acknowledgement in your own mind that, hey, I did that. Pat on the back, great. It can be 15 minutes with a cup of coffee or a cup of tea, your feet up, and maybe a chapter of two of your favorite book or listening to some music. It can be taking yourself out for a walk. It can be planning to have a manicure or a pedicure. It can be a whole range of things. And you're probably going to measure it depending on how big the celebration is. But what celebration also offers us is that chance to stop that chance to reflect on what we've just been through, reflect on the journey we've just completed. It gives us a chance to take stock and to gather the learnings that we might have had, the breakthroughs, the aha moments, the things that didn't go well, to collect all those things together and see if I was doing that again, perhaps I am going to do that again in a few months time, how would I change things? So it allows us to plan the next step. It allows us to just give that break, to draw the line between one thing and what we might choose to be going on to next. It gives us that breathing space. And I believe that then we come to that next thing with a clearer mind because we've had that stop. Now, ladies, I'm sure you'll all agree we're on a journey. Life is a journey. And we're all treading our own path on this journey. And you know, it doesn't really matter what direction you go in. What matters is the huge amount of things to be gained from taking that journey. The huge amount of things to be learnt and then applied as we move on. And that, ladies, is the power of the path. Thank you. Good job, Heather. Yay! <laughs> We have a couple minutes. Any questions or comments? Uh, so just in case you didn't get the connection, Debbie goes on Heather's Camino uh, walks. Those, that's her leader. <laughs> leader. Faye, go ahead. I understand that your book is The Power of the Path and it's about your walks. But listening to you just now was intense in the most emotional, personal way because everything you said is applied to daily life. And we all have our own journeys daily. Some of us have multiple journeys daily. Mm -hmm. um, this week, I had one of those bad journey days. And everything you said applies to where we need to be. So thank you. It, it was empowering. Thank you. Thank you, Faye. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm extremely grateful for that feedback. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Faye, for saying that. Any other comments or questions? Uh, Debbie, I see you moving for your mouse. <laughs> no, was I wrong? No, I mean, I'm happy to say that, you know, Heather is, um, she's one of the most caring and supportive people that you'll ever meet in the world. Um, meeting her, actually, as you know, from me talking about my experiences on the Camino, um, you know, meeting her, 
allowed me to, to start the journey to make my dream of walking the Camino a reality. And I don't know that I would have had the courage to make that first step onto the path if it hadn't been for her. And so if you're ever considering any, she has so many lovely, lovely walks, um, but the Camino of course has a special place in my heart. So she's amazing. There, there aren't words to describe how just incredible she is. You didn't tell me I was going to cry today. <laughs> two, two people who said things, that I could feel the tears in the back of my eyes. <laughs> oh, that's sweet. You know, and I'm a, um, I walk a lot for exercise and, uh, and I have re committed to walking because I'm, I'm training for a 10 K um, over a, a very large bridge. We don't have hills in Florida. We have bridges. So <laughs> um, this is a very large span bridge called the uh, Sky Sunshine Skyway. I know Margaret knows what this one is. It's very, very big. I did it last year without any training. I got over it, but I wanted to train and, and be a little faster this year. And I, I thought about you, Heather, as I was walking the other day um, because I came upon a flock of turkeys. Not that the turkeys reminded you of you, me of you, but I was... <laughs> um, the wonders that we experience, and this was in a neighborhood, you know, I was not in nature per se, but I, I certainly had a bit of nature and I was thinking as I knew you were coming to speak and I thought, oh, you know, this, this is the stuff that Heather talks about, this is this wonderment and, and mm. things that you, um, you know, you can see and do and feel when you're walking. And I was so immersed in myself, not in a bad way, but you know, I was, the muscles were hurting and, the, and I turned the corner and there was this beautiful flock and like, it was like the male turkey for Thanksgiving. It was like, you know, wow. and it was magnificent. And it just reminded me of the, the power of the path. So mm. I just wanted to share that. I always say walking is my spiritual practice. <laughs> oh, abs absolutely, Jill. Totally. Yeah. yeah. It, I always say to people, you know, whether you choose to, you can take your problems for a walk because, you know, if you're out walking and you're thinking about your problems, often that expansiveness will give you the answer. Oh. But equally, you can leave your problems at home and go for a walk and just be in the moment. The interesting thing is that no matter which way you choose, you'll probably come back with the answer. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah I love that. Yeah. Margaret, go ahead. Uh, <clears throat> as Jill knows, we have. Uh, quite a few uh, bike and walking trails here in our particular in our area and um, they're just there's no no reason and I'm talking to myself here <laughs> no reason not to get out and walk um, and beaches and things like that that really connect I often go out to one of our state parks which is about five ten minutes from my home and just walk along the beach there and and connect and um, it's just very grounding. So um, there's, so I'm talking to myself to get myself back out on the walking path again because <laughs> I put it off for years, and and I don't know why. It was just one of those things. Just like one day, it's like, oh, you don't need to walk. And years have gone by, and I haven't done it on a regular basis. And each day, I feel guilty about it. So I need to release that guilt and get back out there. So thanks for the inspiration today. <laughs> Well, actually, um, if I can add, um, I have a walk challenge and although it's available, it's free, it's free and you can do it from anywhere. So any of you who wish to do it could do it. Um, and it, we pledge to walk a certain number of miles in a year. That can be anything from kind of 500, which might sound big, but actually 500 miles is, is actually not very far when you take it over a period of time up to like. A couple of us have been trying to do 2,000 a year. And uh, we just have a Facebook group and, and we have a check-in every, every Monday when people just check in the number of steps and the number of miles. So if any of you would like to join that, we kind of have a bit of a big push to for the beginning of February. And uh, if you follow me on Facebook, you'll see it. We have a Facebook group that you can go on. Um, so it's just there if you want. If you go to the website, um, it's womenwalkingwomentalking.com um, and press freebie. The thing will come up telling you about the, the walk challenge. And um, love to have any of you along. You'll meet people from mostly the UK at the moment, but we have some North American people as well. And Debbie, you might want to get back on there again. <laughs> Not what? putting what? any pressure on. <laughs> yeah, do you mind putting, 
Heather, do you mind putting that web address in the chat box? I yes. will. Absolutely. Thank you. That's can people join it throughout the year or do you kind yes. of no you can, we just have a push because historically it began in february so people did february to the end of january for their year but you can join at any time you want well because i'm a walking coach for a local oh. group so the program starts in april oh. and there's a lot of walkers and they get very excited so this would be a wonderful thing to encourage them to do in addition because you know it's an eight-week training program um and then they don't really know what to do next yeah. so, and i have to mute because the <laughs> that, that, um, Susan, that, would, that would be great they'd be very very welcome and the thing is you know i i go and post like um oh just pieces of information as well debbie sent me a lovely article yesterday which i posted on that as well for the women there and just inspiration you know and and People talk to each other, people put questions on, etc. Um, and it's just all about enabling us to get out there and move more. And as we all know, a little bit of accountability sometimes, you know, you're not you're not competing against the rest of the group, you're just competing against yourself, really. Mm -hmm. But when you can see your steps and your miles every month, and you can like once a quarter look at where you are in terms of your year. I've had women start at a thousand miles and suddenly go halfway through. I'm going for 1500, you know, I can do this. So yeah, yeah, that's awesome. awesome. And you get photo Friday, which is you take oh. pictures when you're on your walks and you post them on Friday. It's kind of fun to see where people are in the world and yeah, that's what neat. you're seeing. Yeah. Yeah. I need to post one today. Yeah. Yes, right. so I'm going to go today and um, put the link to that in the Facebook group for the walking program and see it. Okay. Are there any women okay. who want to start walking right now? Although, do you want me to give you a bit of blurb to put on with it? Would that help, oh. Paul? Okay, oh, I'll yeah. I'll awesome. I'll do that after this and send. I've got your email, I think, on this. Yep. Yeah. Susan's up there. yeah, 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 yeah. I'll oh, do. Cool, I'll fun. Do yeah, ladies yeah. like that. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Maybe yeah. a little too chilly, right? <laughs> right. It's not but too, too cold, but yeah. I was it's saying uh, sunny today, so that makes a big difference. Yeah, there's a big difference. Yeah, it's, it's more the ice than the cold. Sorry, Sorry. Just, just saying it's not always easy. I mean, I am finding it hard to get out as regularly at the moment because it's very gray and very drizzly, misly rain and it's, it's not particularly nice. So I'm finding that a problem at the moment. But, you know, you, when, once I get out there, I'm great. It's just the yeah, thought. It's to get out there, right? Yeah. 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 Sometimes yeah. Um, here, if, you'll, if you go to the mall, people are walking in the mall. They yeah. Especially early. Open them all early so you can walk. Yeah. That's a big thing I've noticed in the States. I mean, we have big shopping malls here, but I don't think they do that over here. <laughs> it's big in summer because in of the summer air. it's so hot that you know that that's hard for a lot of people. I love it. But <laughs> yeah, no, that makes sense. Yeah. And and you know, no what we consider a cold winter morning that I don't really want to get out and bundle up, you know. <laughs> so, you know, there are there are options and other kinds of uh places that people can walk so mm, yeah. that's just my idea. no excuses ladies <laughs> so i say it to myself no excuses <laughs> well heather thank you so much for stopping by today it was so inspirational to hear you talk and uh great speaker i've never heard you speak ah. all, the, all this time i've known you so that was just enthralled thank you so much for that thank you really thank enjoyed you. it jill it's been Good. lovely to meet you all i'll maybe come back and visit again as in thank you, you know, with the group as a member, you know, not Please speaking. Do come visit us. We love it. Uh, we're going to move into the announcement portion uh, before we conclude for the day. This is your chance, Heather included, to yeah. announce anything that you are promoting, a shout out, uh, referral ask, anything like that. Uh, so I'll open up. I got my Brady Bunch going here. So, um, uh, Margaret, I know you're muted, but Margaret, can you go first? Sure, sure. <clears throat> Um, so, um, uh, referrals for me would be great and I'm be able to, uh, if you look, all of you need a really good resume, whether you realize it or not, and you might need a really good LinkedIn profile. So, um, I'd love to be able to work with you or any of your client referrals so they can have a profile that makes them shine and connect with other people throughout the world. That's it. Thank you, Margaret. Connie Jo? 
Um, if anyone knows anyone that is freaking out because it's starting to be tax time and they need help getting their books in order, I would love to help them out. And uh, if anyone knows anyone who's struggling financially and wants help getting um, their personal finances in order, I would love to help them. So thanks, Kai. And thank you. Thank you, Heather. That was wonderful. I set a goal of a thousand miles this year for myself. So I'm, I, I really want to get in your uh, group. That sounds like fun to have a little extra question. Yeah. So oh, come, come and join us. That would be so lovely. And you'll probably yeah. attract other women to come and join us too from your part of yeah. the, world, the world. So great. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Mary Beth. Oh, well, the first, Heather, thank you so much for, for sharing today. Um, my dogs are my guides when it comes to walking. Thank you. <laughs> because it's <laughs> what the weather is, and I'm, I'm just looking at Tibor. And, um, and I wanted to just say, you know, I, I love the principles and the talking because I found that um, I don't go to gyms anymore because they don't, they don't fill me up like walking in nature. Mm. And um, the thought of the, the four walk, the nature is just so wonderful. And that walking is, is so simple. Um, thank you for, for reminding me of why I, why I get out there. It's really important. Um, nothing specific, you know, other than you looking for people who are having issues with their animals, small or big, and wondering what's going on. Love to have a referral. Thank you. Thank you, Mary Beth. Okay. Debbie Keevan. Well, I have never heard Heather speak either. Oh my gosh. Um, that was absolutely fantastic. So thank you for coming today and we get to see your lovely face. <laughs> Missing my, a year ago, I was actually with Heather. So, yeah, um, yeah. so I just want to give a shout out to Mary Beth because um, I'm part of her Uconnect program and I missed the first two classes, and so I'm catching up. And she said, don't worry about it. Come anyway. You're already unlocking your intuition. And I just have to say that her energy was so powerful that for the first time, even though I have clear audience, I heard her voice in my head, and I was able to actually identify the emotion she was feeling. And it was totally shocking. Um, but she's amazing. And so if you're ever considering, you know, working on connecting with your pets or know anyone who is, have them sign up for that class. It's astounding. Agreed. Agreed. Susan Rose. Um, thanks, everybody. Thank you, Heather. That was really great. And it's funny. I was talking to somebody else about the Camino trawl last night. Like it comes up a lot. So, hmm. so. Um, yeah, it just keeps coming up. <laughs> <laughs> it's a sign, Susan. <laughs> uh, yeah, you think? Uh, I get a lot of them. And uh, I will check this one with Mary Beth. That program is great for the, those of you in here who have not taken it yet. Um, I don't really have any ask right now. Just like to get my Friday morning boost of positive energy from the women. And that's my big takeaway every week. <laughs> that's awesome. Thank you, Susan, for saying that. Faye, you're next. Thank you, Heather, for your presentation today. It was wonderful and mesmerizing, actually. Um, as far as my um, ask for today, again, a boutique, a shop that may be interested in presenting the capes. Um, if you know of anybody who's in an unfortunate situation that's going through any infusion therapy and you want to give them a hug, give me a buzz. Thank you, Faye. I'll go next. Uh, I put it in the chat box that I'm hosting Study Hall for All on Tuesday, 1 p.m. to 3.30 p.m. Eastern. This is something I do in the Celestial Circle every month, and I'm opening it up to any entrepreneur who feels like they just need some time to get some implementation done, uninterrupted, concentrated implementation time. So if you are not in the Celestial Circle and would like to join us, the link is there. It's a free event. Um, I will do a little spiel at the end for the Celestial Circle. Very soft pitch, but uh, just I like to be transparent about that. Um, but just come and in, in, in be with us and uh, enjoy uh, some sisterhood and get your work done. You will be amazed what you can get done in two and a half hours. It really is amazing. So feel free to join us. I would love to have you there. 
And Heather, what can, what, what can we give you today? Well, I actually can, if anyone knows anyone who has a burning desire to walk the Camino and is feeling quite fit at the moment, I have sadly had a couple of women have to pull out of my spring Camino in May. Wow. One because she needs some surgery and the other because she's pulled a hamstring. These things happen, you know, it just is one of those things. And we'll still have a wonderful time, but if the, I could replace those two women with two other women, that would be fabulous. But I've also now getting people booking up for autumn 2019 and 2020. So I've put the link to the Camino page if, uh, if you want to go and have a look at it. And please just spread the word because I say there are, I think there's a film called The Way which tells the story of the Camino, which um, has got Martin Sheen in it okay. and is a very lovely film. It's a film, so it's not exactly a true representation, but it's a lovely film to watch. And I think a lot of North American people have seen that and then it's made the Camino more real for them. So if you know anyone who's interested, then um, get them to have a chat with me and let them know that a chat is just a chat. I'm not going to assume that they're signing up, but they may want to have questions answered. And um, Susan, if you're interested, even for 2020, um, and you want to have a chat, very happy to do that. But we do book quite far away so that people can spread payment and that sort of thing, you know. So, and training. Yeah. And training, yes. Yeah. Six months is a, good, is a good time to, you know, you can get fit definitely in six months' time. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you, Heather. So that is it for today. Next Friday, we have Freya, right, Debbie? Freya. Oh, how lovely. Yeah, so Freya was the one who would make it. She uh, was a goof up on her calendar, so she's come back on our invitation. She's the numerologist. So that'll she be was brilliant. She yeah. oh, is good. Yeah, wonderful. So come woman. back, Heather. You can come see Freya again. I might come and see Freya. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we'd love to have you. And Connie Jo gets the the mini reading. Oh, that's right. Ooh. You get a mini reading, Connie Jo. Yeah. Very exciting. Oh, you're in for fun, Connie Jo. Oh, <laughs> lovely. So uh, be sure to come back for that. Spread the word, and uh, we will see you all then. I hope you have a great weekend. It was great to see everybody. Heather, good to see you again. Thank you. Thank Thanks you, Heather. Bye. Thank you. Have a nice weekend, everybody. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.